This is KGW News at Noon. Thanks for joining us here at noon. I'm Drew Carney and our top local story this hour is one we've been following since early this morning. Clackamas County Sheriff's deputies and Portland police officers shot and killed someone who they say was a homicide suspect. This happened late last night on Southeast 82nd Avenue right near the Clackamas Town Center. This video we're showing you is from the scene. It shows law enforcement approaching a car that we're told had the suspect inside. The sheriff's office says deputies and police officers were chasing the suspect last night right around 11 p.m. before the suspect crashed there on Southeast 82nd. Again, Clackamas County deputies and Portland police officers wound up shooting and killing the suspect. We still don't know their name, whether or not they had a weapon on them or any information about the homicide that they're connected to. New at noon, Washington Governor Jay Inslee signed the bill today that makes Washington the 10th state in the country to ban the sale of assault style weapons. The bill only bans new sales, though. People who already own those weapons are allowed to keep them. The Second Amendment Foundation immediately filed a lawsuit against this ban. A reminder that today is the last day to register to vote in next month's Multnomah County special election. Ballots for this were supposed to go out tomorrow, but more than 550,000 of them need to be reprinted because of a mistake. Election officials say all the ballots included a race for District 3 County Commissioner, but that race should have only appeared on ballots for people who live in that district. The county says the reprints will cost more than $300,000, adding that the county will use budget savings and a contingency fund to pay for that cost. All ballots will now be mailed out by next Tuesday. So again, if you do need to register or simply need to update your address, you can visit OregonVotes.gov slash register. And again, you must register by the end of the day today to vote in the special election on May 16th. There's also a special election happening today in Clark County, so the details of that are on the screen right now. Voters are deciding to approve or reject two replacement levies, one for the Washougal School District and the other for the Woodland School District. At this point, you can only register to vote in person. All ballots have to be postmarked by today or dropped off at a ballot box by 8 o'clock tonight. For more details about this, you can check out the Clark County Elections website that we're showing you right there on your screen. Meanwhile, Nike co-founder Phil Knight and his wife Penny are investing $400 million to help revitalize Northeast Portland's Albina neighborhood. It is a landmark investment that Knight says will support current and future generations of black Portlanders. But as KGW's Blair Best reports, some people are skeptical about whether or not the money will actually help. I feel connected to this area. In the Albina neighborhood, Ramon Lowe's roots run deep. I mean, I have a relative on this one of the people up on top of this building. I have an uncle that's on the Black Panther thing over there. I was born at that hospital. I went to that school. And while it's the community where he once felt most at home, it's now become a part of Portland he hardly recognizes. They've moved most of us out. It was historically predominantly black neighborhood of growing up. Most of us have moved out. Because of the cost of housing, Lowe says, along with development projects like I-5 and Legacy Emanuel Medical Center, he points to, that have forced black families and businesses to the city's outskirts. It makes me feel displaced, disheartened that, you know, I can't be in this neighborhood. People look at me now like, what are you doing over here? It's a feeling Nike's co-founder, Phil Knight, and his wife, Penny, are aiming to reverse by investing a historic $400 million into the neighborhood. At a private gathering Monday afternoon, they announced their plan to create the Rebuild Albina Project to transform current and future generations of Black Portland, they say, by investing in education, cultural art, and projects to strengthen the community's roots. Knight saying in a statement, quote, I have long believed in the community of Portland. Some of my most important memories are connected to the east side of Portland, including in Lower Albina. Years ago, Phil Knight was behind the opening of the Albina Nike community store here off MLK, where some of the profits went back into the neighborhood. But it's been closed for months now due to theft, and it's not clear if it'll reopen as part of this project. The money will be managed by a new group headed by Rukaya Adams, who grew up in Northeast Portland, who calls the investment unparalleled. I'm wondering how does that mean they're trying to bring us back? Are they going to build affordable housing? What does that mean? 
and others, like former Nike employee Oscar Burrell, who still lives in Albina, echoed Lowe's skepticism. I feel like it's a little late for it, and I don't feel it's genuine, if I would say. I feel like it's uh, more so for their own, you know, benefits and image versus the actual community and the actual people. And believes the change his neighborhood needs runs much deeper. We just want to be accepted and be respected as one. It's a lot more needed than, you know, just putting some money into the neighborhood. Give us back the identity that we built in this neighborhood. Exactly the concerns this project's leaders say they hope to address. In North Portland, Blair Best, KGW News. All right, following that report from Blair, we're going to check in with Mr. Rodney Hill in the Weather Center. Rod, what are you pointing at there? Sunshine, I know, I know right? <laughs> what, 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 what is, is that? that? Why is the sky blue and not <laughs> white or gray, right? What's going on? All right, beautiful sunshine across our entire region. We do have a little bit of uh, mid to high level clouds in some places. Temperatures are beginning to respond to the fact that we have been warming up nicely. 52 along the central coast. That was our live camera in Newport. And here's a mostly sunny sky down in wine country from our Stoller family. Family Vineyards Estate Cam down in Dayton. Downtown Portland, we said on sunrise this morning would be 55 degrees at noon. That's exactly where we are. So we are on easy track to get up into the 60s and see fairly what would be considered normal temperatures for this time of the year today. I've got us at 67 this afternoon, 62 at 8 p.m. Now remember, today is just day one of this stretch of warm, sunny weather, warming sunny weather that's still on track to go through Saturday. We'll have that seven day forecast, which includes 70s, 80s, mm. 60s, mm. and 50s before mm. it's all done. That's coming up. <laughs> Rod, you hit that uh, noontime 55 right in the head there, my friend. Yeah, we'll see how we do with the 67 <laughs> at 4 p.m. <laughs> all right. More with Rod a little bit later, but right now we want to tell you about a city-led program that's helping local businesses recover from the pandemic. That uh, program recently celebrated a milestone. Here for Portland is the group behind what it calls a paid worker program. In a nutshell, they will pay someone to work at a small business temporarily, allowing the business to save thousands of dollars. Here's KGW's Devin Haskins with more. Charlie's Deli on Northwest 5th has a new employee inside. Her name is Deborah Mustard. I only live a few blocks away, so it's really close. Oh, that's perfect. And it's worked out really well. I enjoy it. <laughs> it was a career change for me. Mustard wasn't hired by the restaurant's owner. Instead, she was a temporary replacement by the city back campaign called Here for Portland. She's among the 100 employees that the nonprofit is either paid or is currently paying to work at a small business. Using federal funds from the American Rescue Plan Act, Here for Portland pays the worker's salary for up to 300 hours, which is about seven weeks of work. I mean, it's significant when you look at the bottom dollar amount of what's earned per employee. It's about a seven thousand uh, dollar commitment from the city uh, through these federal dollars uh, to us per each employee. Each eligible business can tap into the pool of available employees twice. You know, with a max of two, that's a significant almost fifteen thousand dollars worth of money that we're funneling through the city from federal dollars that are really helping us. And once the 300 hours are maxed out, the business can choose to hire them, which Charlie's did with Debra. A win-win for both Charlie's Deli and Debra. But just to have somebody that's a fan join our team, what else could you ask for? A lot of the stress, a better um, work-life balance for me. I don't take my job home with me. <laughs> and I have a great co-workers. If here for Portland sounds familiar, over the holidays you may remember they handed out $50 gift cards that were redeemable at local small businesses using the Kudo app, another Portland small business. It also placed PSU students with temporary jobs, also with that up to 300 hours of work. The city says it is looking at ways to find more funding to continue the program. I think this is really good bang for the buck, particularly given that uh, the recovery of our, our business districts in our central city is top priority.